What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because in this episode, I'm gonna share with you five ways to control slugs in your garden, not only without using any pesticides at all, but also doing it organically. Let's go. So the first thing that I wanted to do was just kind of describe the life of a slug, because once you understand how they live and their lifestyle in the garden, you can better control them in the garden. And so uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was just kind of describe the life of a slug. So slugs are invertebrates. They don't have bones. They're actually not true insects either because they don't have segmented bodies. They're in the mollusk family, making them very similar to uh, slugs, snails, um, and they also breathe through their skin much like worms, though worms are not in the same family as slugs and snails. Now, uh, the uh, member of the mussel family or the mollusk family, uh, they excrete a slime coat and the slime coat comes from underneath their foot. Now the foot is not like your foot and my foot. Uh, their foot is just the bottom of the muscle that uh, allows them to move throughout uh, your garden or wherever they're going. It allows them to climb things and also it uh, protects them. So when they're going over top of material, that slime coat prevents them from getting punctured. It also makes it very inedible so that uh, things like birds and other uh, predators don't wanna attack them because that slime coat is very bitter. And so uh, it's a multifaceted thing. Not only are they protected from their shell if they're snails, but they're also protected from a very bitter excretion being their slime. And so this is, uh, you know, this is a very advantageous creature that has multiple levels of protection. And it breathes through, it breathes through its skin much like worms do, uh, meaning that it needs damp conditions in order to breathe. They don't have lungs like you or I do. So uh, the slug or snail, which I'm gonna kinda lump them into the same video because in certain areas you have slugs and other areas you have snails, and then in some areas you have both slugs and snails, but because they're treated exactly the same way, I'm, really gonna, uh, I'm, I'm going to lump them all into this video together. So because we know that they breathe through their skin, uh, one way that you can uh, basically prevent them in your garden is by creating dry conditions. If you're finding that your garden is uh, just overrun with slugs and snails, the first thing that you wanna do is look at moisture. Now moisture is a critical component for uh, slugs to survive, slugs and snails. And so the first way that they can survive is in mulch. If you are doing like a back to Eden style garden or you have mulch in your walkways, mulch is basically really large sticks and that those sticks hold and trap moisture very well. That's the job of a mulch. And so if you have lots of mulch, a lot of times slugs and snails will find this kind of chip like material a home and they can survive under there. And then uh, when there's uh, when there's dew on the ground or when there's a fresh rain, that's when they can move around the garden. If things are kept very dry, it's actually relatively difficult for them to move throughout the garden. And so by keeping your mulch layer far enough away from your plants to where there's kind of a, a dry barrier, that can really prohibit their movement. Now, it's not to say that they can't move throughout your garden, and a lot of them will, especially in the early morning or right, right after a rain when everything is wet or after you water or things like that. So anytime there's moisture, they can give them a good path, can help them to, uh, can help them to crawl. Now, a lot of people, that does lead me to the question of, well, what about things like eggshells? What about things like coffee grounds? None of those actually work, and the reason why is because of that slime coat. We talked about how the slime coat protects their, the underside of their foot from being punctured and it helps them move throughout, the, um, throughout your garden. And the same exact thing happens with eggshells. Now it's a common misconception that eggshells work, but in multiple studies and multiple experiments, uh, eggshells and coffee grounds were not found to be effective whatsoever in controlling slugs. And that's because of that protective foot. What can be protective and what can work is actually sand. And the reason why is because of how dry sand gets. Now, sand is not a coarse material that uh, irritates them. It's just a very, it's a very well draining material. And so one way that you can protect against slugs uh, using kind of the knowledge of a slug and how it survives is by mulching with sand. Now, sand is a very fast draining, fast drying material. So I only suggest using about a half inch to maybe an inch at most around your plants and making sure that, uh, you know, that you do mulch 
about three or four inches away from your plant. Because once that sand dries out, it's very difficult for the slug to actually climb onto the sand because of how dry it is. And so uh, that's, that's kind of one way that you can use uh, you know, a slug's natural habitat to your advantage. But then also by reducing the amount of mulch that you have, that's your second way of kind of eliminating slugs in the garden. And then the third way is by actually uh, increasing your spacing. Now, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm trying to weed the garden and talk at the same time. I've got a huge bed here of sunflower volunteers and I don't want them growing up <laughs> in amongst my lettuce and whatnot because uh, I had sunflowers here last year and they're all volunteers, so I gotta get these out. But like I was saying, in the early spring, when you, know, when you, when you have damp conditions, you tend to have uh, slug problems when you grow plants that are grown too close together. Now we grow in what's called high intensity. And speaking of my, my lettuce here, I've got about 75 lettuce plants in this little four foot row here, 75 lettuce plants. Now, as they grow and as they compete uh, to you know, the, the fittest, of, um, maybe the, the most fit or most healthy 30 to 40 plants, there's still gonna be about 30 to 40 plants here growing in this simple little uh, three foot row here. And so that's a lot of plants growing closely together to where there's a lot of leaves overlapping and those plants are really growing closely together. And what you may find is in the early season, those, when the, um, those leaves, when they're growing so closely together, they trap a lot of moisture and they actually, because they do such a good job of naturally mulching the ground, which is our objective, they can also sometimes allow for things like slugs to survive underneath the leaves. Things like uh, broccolis, cabbages. If you have your plants grown closely together, they have these really big leaves. And so they're growing uh, very closely together. They're shading the soil. And so uh, by spacing your plants out a little bit further in the early spring when things are damp and things are cool, that can really uh, help to kind of better your success in the garden. Now, the fourth way that you can help to prevent uh, slugs in the garden is very much in the same line of, of thought of you know, leaves protecting the soil and leaves creating condensation and moisture. Um, and that's through pruning your plants up. Now, if you don't have a pathway for the slugs to climb, if you don't have you know, leaves on the ground acting as a home, basically acting as a mulch, you know, your, your wood chips act as a mulch, but also your leaves can act as a mulch. And when they're touching the soil, uh, that can actually hold a lot of moisture and condensation that slugs can find home. And so uh, by simply pruning your plants up, even your broccolis and cabbages, get your brassicas and things that have big leaves, get those things off the ground. If you're growing lettuce, like leaf lettuce, trim those lower leaves and let them kind of grow up off the ground a little bit. And so yes, you can still grow lettuce, but just make sure that you prune it up a little bit so that there's good airflow underneath the plant and it dries out a little faster. Remember, they breathe through their skin and they like damp conditions. So if they breathe through their skin and they like damp conditions, simply give them drier conditions and they won't wanna be there. All right, and the fifth and final way that you can control slugs is not necessarily through environmental controls, but more or less through just controlling their food source. So slugs and snails love leafy things. They love lettuce and broccoli and cabbage. A lot of your brassicas are like their favorite food source. Things like peas, tender things, tender greens. They love tender things because uh, it's very easy for them to, to munch on. And so things like radishes and, uh, and peas, tender stuff like that, they love. And so by simply growing those in a different part of the year or growing them in a different part of the garden altogether is going to reduce their food source, which is what they're attracted to. I mean, they wanna eat, they wanna survive like you and I do. And so, you know, if it's something like brassicas where they can survive in warmer weather, you know, I'm not talking about spinach or I'm not talking about radishes. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about uh, your, your brassicas. They can survive in warmer weather. They have no problem with warm weather whatsoever. And so things like cabbages, you can grow them in June or July even. Heck, you can grow them in August or September for a fall harvest. And there's gonna be way less slug and snail pressure in those months than in the early season when there's more rain, more condensation, you know, more dew in the morning, cooler nights, cooler mornings. They love those conditions. And so by simply just growing in a different time of the year when there's less of them around, you're gonna have a lot less pest pressure. But if you really do wanna grow things like radishes or spinach or lettuce, just also know that you don't necessarily have to just grow like this and just basically 
put out a, a salad bar for them. You can grow in containers. You can grow in a different part of your garden that might have even better conditions, even more, you know, even more environmental conditions that they don't like. Heck, it might be a raised bed off the ground on feet, like our, like our veggie pod that we grow in a lot. And that's right off the ground. So that's even harder for them to get to because they have to crawl up the legs of the veggie pod into the garden. And so basically you're, you're really reducing the amount of pressure that you have in those style beds as well. Containers, growing on your patio, just so many different ways to grow where there's gonna be a lot less uh, pest pressure from slugs and snails. You don't have to throw them in your garden where, you know, they're, where they're gonna be in close contact. So those are five ways to reducing slugs and snails in your garden. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I really do hope that you learned something new. Um, you know, I, I don't have much pest pressure when it comes to slug or snails, but I know that it can be frustrating. And why I know this is because my, uh, my aunt and uncle, they live down in Texas, and there are so many snails in their property that basically without these tips that I'm implementing and, and talking about, they wouldn't have a garden at all. But because of these tips, I've actually been able to help them get a fairly good, uh, fairly good handle on their pest problems when it comes to snail and, uh, snails and slugs to where they're actually being, being able to get a harvest. They just put a garden in last year and it was so defeating because of how little they got that I said, let me, let me give you guys a quick little lecture course on snails and slugs. And so I thought it'd be just a really good opportunity for me to help you guys out as well because um, it can, it can be discouraging. I mean, they are ruthless. They eat so much. They move so fast. Despite their moving slow, they move fast. <laughs> you know, they, they really just multiply, move fast, and just can wipe out a garden in a matter of a few days. And so um, it can be discouraging. But knowing how to control them and knowing how to better kind of just get a leg up on them uh, can really help your garden out. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I got to get back to thinning out this garden because <laughs> these... Uh, these uh, sunflower seedlings aren't going to thin themselves and get them out of the garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.